Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Emily Williamson. I am this year's general manager and show lead for the Lakeland College Student Management Farm Chief Unit. Our unit is made up of six young ladies who are really eager to show what we've done this year. This year, our mission statement is to establish our knowledge and is to expand our knowledge and establish our unit within the industry. This year, our team goals was to maintain a healthy flock, improve everyone's knowledge of the industry, and that includes ourselves and the public, increase the biosecurity in the barn and the overall flock, improve our team dynamic, expand our industry contacts, find a long-term pasture for our flock, and improve the drainage in our dry lot. These were our recommendations from last year's team. To sell and buy at Agribition, we did sell one of our purebred Canadian Arcot ram lambs. We didn't buy anything though, as we were looking for a purebred Canadian Arcot ram and we were the only one selling one. Feed the show sheep earlier. We didn't do this because we felt that our show sheep were already at the uh, condition that we wanted them at but we did keep them on a higher ration of grain as the rest of the flock's grain ration went down. Put the ULMs out on pasture over the summer. Our whole flock was able to graze on pasture majority of the summer until later when they had to be moved to the dry lot. And then bring last year's ULMs into the mature class at Agribition. We didn't do this as we didn't feel that the ULMs from last year were a good representation of our mature flock here at Lakeland. These are our recommendations for next year's team. We recommend that they flush the ULMs early to get a full flush in as we weren't able to do that, but you'll see later in the presentation, it did cause our lambing percentage to be lower than normal. Continue to breed earlier as your lambs will hit the right weight at the, at, the high, at the peak of the market. Continue more private sales as you do get higher prices and you get higher interest, as well as we all get more industry contacts. Keep the ewe lamb separate from the matures during lambing. Ewe lambs we find tend to have more problems during lambing as it's their first time. We like to keep them separate and closer to the barn if any of these problems occur. Increase biosecurity in the barn and the overall flock. Because of the new bison unit coming to Lakeland, we want to start increasing the biosecurity for the safety of our flock anyway, but also so it's not as big of a change when that time comes. And ensure that the lactation hay is bought after sample tests are reviewed. As you'll see later that our lactation hay was bought before the samples were tested and the hay wasn't up to standards. Now for our SWOT analysis. For our strengths, we all have a passion for agriculture, a dedication to the unit, and we all have an experience with a variety of different types of livestock. For our weaknesses, we have a lack of pasture, we have a lack of biosecurity, but we are working on that. We have a lack of communication, which has improved closer to the end, and then COVID-19, as we are not able to work together as a team and we need to communicate fully online. For our opportunities, we have Agribition and the Canadian Sheep Classic. We did get the opportunity to go to Agribition, but the Canadian Sheep Classic will be out east, so we will most likely not be able to go. Purchasing new genetics for the flock, we did get the opportunity to buy a new ram, which you will see later in the presentation. We have high interest in our private sales and we had many people already asking about our lambs before our lambing season even started. And then the Advantage Breeder Sale on July 4th, where we will be selling some of our stock. Now for threats, we have the North American Lamb Company. This just remains a threat as it is still a new entity in the industry and we are not sure how it will affect it. We have a drop in the lamb market. This was happening anyway, and we were starting to have an increase, but because of COVID-19, there is more of a decrease. And then because of COVID-19, as we can't do as many sales and we can't work with our flock as we would like to.
Hello, I'm Caitlin Haunch. I'm this year's records, reproduction, commercial, and purebred manager. Now for records. For flock inventory, we have 173 ewes, 213 lambs, and five rams, making a total flock inventory of 391. Now for our key performance indicators. We look at four sections, uteram ratio, opens, lamb mortality, and lambing percentage. For uteram ratio, the industry target is one to 50. The Lakeland goal is one to 44, and our Lakeland actual is one to 36. This is because we have sufficient ram power. For opens, the industry target is less than 2%. The Lakeland goal is 2%, and this year we had 15%. This was because of breeding two weeks earlier and no flush prior to breeding. For lambing mortality, the industry target is less than 11%. Lakeland goal is 7%, and our actual was 2.1%. For lambing percentage, the industry target is 180%, Lakeland goal is 180%, and our actual was 136%. This was also because of breeding two weeks earlier in order to get our lambs up to weight for the holiday Ramadan when there is usually a spike in lamb prices and no flush prior to breeding. Now for purebred. This year we are very excited that we got the opportunity to buy a new ram. We purchased a Medicine Ridge 514E. We are very excited for what he'll add to our flock and think he is a very good addition to Lakeland. We named him Eric. Hello everybody, my name is Katrina Gallen and I am this year's Finance, Marketing and Public Relations Manager. Now it's time to talk numbers. This year we have exceeded the projected income by 105% and we stayed within our budget of expenses at 92% of the budget. This is due to us finding an invoice for over $17,000 in April when we were reconciling inventory. We did not know about this receipt until April and it was from June of 2019. This changed how we could have done things throughout the year as we were so focused on trying to be reasonable with what we were doing. However, with COVID-19, this extra income will help in the future. The largest expense part of any operation is going to be the feed costs. This year, our feed costed us a total of $27,906.81. Our veterinary medical was higher than our projected because we had two C-sections, which will be explained later in the presentation. Deductions and show expenses were different this year because we took less sheep to aggribition, decreasing our show expenses. Deductions will increase depending on how many lambs went to sale, and in 2019, there were more lambs going to market. This means that our total expense is $39,547.31. For the income, the majority of our income comes from mixed sheep sales with $36,346.47. Our use sales, which include calls and private sales of just use, accounts for $8,326.42. I'm very proud of how our RAM sales went this year as they have accumulated almost 10% of our overall income at $5,350 for the sale of five RAMs. Our wool sales and breeders grant are a very small portion of our income 
However, they're always going to be accounted for as any number helps. This concludes to our gross income being $55,289.85. Our net income income is $15,742.54. With our cost of production, we are very close to industry. With Lakeland being under industry, which is a good thing, meaning that we aren't overspending on the animals. We are currently at $199.44 per U per year, and industry is at $250.49 per U per year. Keeping in mind that the industry average is based off of a farm of 500 U's and we have 173 U's. Our cost of feed were lower as we used feed that was from our farm at Lakeland as the crop tech kids were fortunate enough to sell us and give us some barley. Our straw and bedding costs are lower than industry as we have a barn that can fit all of our ewes inside at night and therefore we don't have to be bedding outside as often in the winter months. Our miscellaneous and farm supply was higher than industry but that was just due to what we needed this year. Our shearing cost is fairly close as well. Our labor has been accounted for even though the students do the majority of the labor throughout the year. On to marketing. This was a great experience throughout the year as we had lots of people coming up to us and asking us for our stock before lambing season even started. For our private sales, we sold four purebred ram lambs, four purebred ewe lambs, and five commercial ewe lambs. This was a great sale as we had customers that come to us every year looking for stock. We sold 25 orphan lambs and the profit of these private sales is $4,903 so far as we are still waiting on invoices from orphan lambs. We also had a buyer come up to us and ask about 10 to 15 head of you lambs for stock, so we're in the process of making that deal as well. Another upcoming sale will be the Advantage Breeder Sale on July 4th of 2020. The sale will be moved to online and private treaty because of the coronavirus. We will be expecting to sell three purebred ram lambs, two purebred ewe lambs, and two pens of five Suffolk Canadian Arcot Cross. Stay tuned and for more information on the sale. Our public relations page has a total of 403 page likes and 415 page followers. Our most reactions on a post is 115. Our top post was actually about the Advantage Breeders sale as I shared it to numerous groups on Facebook trying to get as many people interested as I could with a total of 8,000 engagements. As a public relations manager, it is also our job to organize donations as well as clothing articles for the team. So we were very fortunate to receive a donation from Provost Pets and Livestock Supply and that money went towards our jackets and embroidery. Hi everyone, I'm Karina Van Brabant and I got the opportunity to be, to be this year's Health and Orphans Manager. With health, uh, prior to lambing, we had vaccinated the ewes with Glanvac 6 um, to ensure that the immunity was passed on to the lambs. So also with lambing happening this year in our second semester, some main health concerns that we had were uh, two lamb or two ewes had a vaginal prolapse and they were treated with Medicam for the pain and they did recover. One ewe had a uterine prolapse. We used a uterine spoon multiple times but it had not stayed in place and tore the uterine lining. So we decided to euthanize her as we felt that she was not going to recover. We also had two C-sections this year. One being an emergency C-section and we had to treat multiple times with Depocillin uh, due to infection and she was given Medicam for the pain uh, both of the ewes that had a C-section did recover as well. We had one umbilical rupture in an orphan lamb 
and we treated with three doses of 0.25 milliliters of Trinidox and the lamb recovered as well. And we also had one ewe that had a retained placenta and she was retreated with four milliliters of long acting penicillin. Um, for overall, we had 27 orphan lambs and I worked alongside our marketing manager to sell them. We used a total of four and a half bags of milk replacer, which four of those were left uh, over from last year. And we only ended up buying one bag this year and only using half of the bag. So the total of our milk replacer came to $410.60. We also would like to thank the dairy unit for donating the colostrum as that was an expense we did not have to have. Um, the orphans, their cost per orphan was about $15.21 and they averaged about 16 days of feeding before they were sold. So our total cost gain came to 95 cents per lamb. This year with the orphans, we also focused on biosecurity to just decrease the spread of ORF throughout the orphans and the flock. As we felt last year, um, there was lots of them, so we decided to decrease that chance of happening um, by separating them in the pens, ones with ORF and ones without. I would also, we would also like to thank the VMAs for feeding the orphans and everyone that had purchased one. Uh, we were also excited to announce that this year we had the opportunity to mentor and help Alterio School by donating four orphan ewe lambs. In February, some of the students had the opportunity to tour Lakeland and see how we operate our student managed farm so they could take ideas from our farm to use for theirs. We hope to continue to work alongside them in the future and see where their managed farm uh, goes. Rachel Rain, and I'm this year's Nutrition and Facilities Manager. We like to use alfalfa mixed hay in our lactation ration, especially as it has excellent protein and calcium. Our gestation lactation hay is usually bought in bulk as it is shared with the horses and cows. This year, the hay had a net energy lactation of 0 0.02 lower than our regular hay, as well as a lower, as lower total dietary nutrition nutrients. Um, due to this poor quality, we alternate our bale use and increased grain by 0.5 pounds per head per day to maintain acceptable performance. Although this hay was not ideal for high performance, it worked for our production cycle. Our ewes would take 151 days to lose half a body condition score on rations with the alfalfa hay mix. Our ewes average body condition score prior lambing was at two and a half to three and post lambing maintained their average body condition score of two and a half to three. I was unable to get weaning weights to compare to last year due to COVID-19. However, lamb performance appears average. So the January 2020 feed intake per day, we started off with one pound of grain per head per day. And as I mentioned in the last slide, we increased to a pound and a half and we did that on February 14th. By March 20th, we went down to one pound per head per day to get ready for weaning. And April 1st, all we used were off grain for weaning. Um, based on our average 1400 bale use per month, uh, we used 22 bales based on our SMF year. And our average intake per head per day was approximately three pounds per head per day. But this number is based off our ration. And the cost of production says it is 5.6 pounds per head per day. And this is because our user fed free choice and the wastage would be included in this number. And now for facilities. So we currently have no repairs required at this time. We would like to install a gate across from Pen2 North into the barn for convenience during lambing and get new dividers for separating the lambing groups when the user inside the barn for the night. Um, the total cost of these two uh, projects would be $250 as we would only need the labor expenses because we have the materials. Also, another thing to add was we would have gotten our tinning of our creep feeders done if we had known the money was available, as Katrina had mentioned um, earlier in the slides. Hello, my name is Rebecca Harper Scott, and I am this year's range and forage manager, as well as the mix farm manager. We will start off with range and forage. 
This semester, I took a proposal into Jeff and Josie about fencing LC11. The reason being we do not have very many opportunities for pastures and would like to see our sheep on grass rather than having to dry lot them all summer. After my proposal, Jeff, Josie and I were going to start working on profit and loss statements for LC11. But unfortunately, due to COVID-19, this has been cut short. I also looked into a pasture south of the college. The only issue we have with that is we would require a guardian animal as there is an abundance of coyotes around the pasture. Unfortunately, this year we will need to be dry lotting a good chunk of our flock over the summer as the other ones will be on the three pastures we have been generously donated by the people around Vermilion. Now on to mixed farm. This year I had the fantastic opportunity to be in charge of the kindergarten tours alongside with our flock's shepherd Joe. We had the opportunity to teach the younger generations the ins and outs of farm life. Joe sheared one of our ewes for a demonstration and we taught the kids about how the wool comes off the ewe, where it goes, and what uses it can be used for. We also let the kids take a little bit of wool home to show their parents, friends, and other family. As well as the wool, we told the kids about our orphan lambs and the reason as to why we need to feed them and not their mother. The kids got to help out with lunchtime feedings of the orphans, and if I say so myself, they had a riot playing and feeding all the baby lambs. Joe also showed them the feet, and they were all very interested in watching the sheep get its nails trimmed. Joe and I both had lots of fun doing this project, but unfortunately, again due to COVID-19, we were unable to get through all of our tour groups as we planned to, but there's always next year. Thank you for, to everybody for listening to our presentation. We'd like to give a special thank you to New Holland for sponsoring the Student Managed Farm. Josie Van Lent and Jeff Brown, Carmen Zayak, our faculty advisor, Joe Dixon, our shepherd, and all of the farm staff that are taking care of the sheep while we can't be there. If you have any questions, please put them in the comment section. Thank you.